Hello, this is Dr. Hannah Asil, and this is gaseous exchange and respiration. So this is for biology or in combined science. So remember that the gaseous exchange surfaces are included in what we call the respiratory system. And the respiratory system is made up of the lungs and the uh, trachea, bronchus, bronchiole, and alveoli. Again, when we breathe in air, it goes in through the uh, nose, of course, through the larynx, that uh, structure on top of the trachea is the larynx, and then it goes through that uh, tube in the middle of the chest, which is called trachea. And then the trachea branches out into two branches, one going into each lung. So these branches are called bronchus, or the plural is bronchi. So each bronchus then branches into thinner and thinner tubes, which we call bronchiole. And at the end of the bronchiole, there are alveoli, which are tiny air sacs that act as the gaseous exchange surface. Remember that we have the diaphragm that separates the lungs from the abdomen. And the lungs, of course, are protected by ribs that are attached together with intercoastal muscle. So again, we're breathing air. It goes through trachea, bronchus, bronchiole, alveoli. Now, these respiratory uh, tracts are lined with two types of cells. One of them is the goblet cells, and the goblet cells are the ones that make mucus. And remember that mucus traps any dust and microbes that enter with the air. Now, the other type of cells are the ciliated cells, and the ciliated cells have tiny little hairs called cilia that are constantly moving and these cilia help to sweep the mucus out of the respiratory system we don't want the mucus to go into the lungs so the cilia sweep the mucus out they are then uh, swallowed into the esophagus that goes to the stomach and the stomach contains acid that will kill any microbes or bacteria or viruses that go in with the air now, once the air reaches the alveoli, and we said the alveoli are the tiny little air sacs at the end of the uh, bronchiole. Now, in the alveoli, air is coming in and out when you breathe in and breathe out. As we breathe in, the air inside the air alveoli have a lot of oxygen. So, this oxygen will diffuse into the surrounding blood vessels. Remember we said the heart pumps the blood to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. So the blood is coming from the heart through the pulmonary artery. Now the pulmonary artery branches out in the lungs into tiny little capillaries that surround the alveoli. In these capillaries, the blood exchanges uh, gases with the air inside the alveoli. So oxygen diffuses into the blood and carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood into the alveoli. Also, the alveoli are lined inside with a film of moisture. So we have a layer of moisture inside the alveoli. Now, as we breathe in and breathe out, there is exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the air and the blood. So the alveoli are called the gaseous exchange surfaces. Once oxygen has gone into the blood and carbon dioxide diffused out of the blood, then the blood is returned to the heart through the pulmonary vein. We said by then the blood is what we call oxygenated blood, full of oxygen or has a lot of oxygen. And it goes to the heart through the pulmonary vein in order to be pumped to all parts of the body. So if we look at the alveoli, we said we call it the gaseous exchange surfaces. How are they adapted to this function? Remember, 
adapted to their function means what do they have that allows them to be gaseous exchange surfaces so the alveoli how what do they have to allow them to uh, act as gaseous exchange surfaces is that they are large surface area remember we have lots of alveoli in each lung a very large number of alveoli in each lung so we say it provides large surface area they also have very thin walls to allow the gases to diffuse easily into the blood and out of the blood uh, they have moist surfaces and this allows the gases also to diffuse easily they also have blood capillaries bringing blood and taking blood away so this allows removal of the gases that diffuse and this maintains the diffusion uh, concentration gradient that allows diffusion of the gases we also have ventilation ventilation means the air keeps going in and out into the alveoli you breathe in and you breathe out and you breathe in and you breathe out so you're constantly having lots of oxygen inside the alveoli so that the oxygen can diffuse into the blood and then the carbon dioxide that diffuses out of the blood is carried out so this maintains again the concentration grid so if we compare the air going in which we call inhaled air with the air going out which we call exhaled air now which one has more oxygen of course the one going in inhaled air has more oxygen than exhaled air the inhaled air that's the air around us that has about 21 percent of oxygen now by the time the air goes in oxygen diffuses the, to the blood and then the air comes out we say it has less oxygen it has about 16 percent please don't say inhaled air has oxygen exhaled air does not that's not right we don't absorb all the oxygen that is in the air inhaled air has more oxygen than exhaled air if we want to be specific inhaled air has 21 percent oxygen exhaled air has about 16 percent and that is because the oxygen in the inhaled air diffuses to the blood to be used by cells in respiration so that's why the exhaled air has less oxygen now carbon dioxide the air around us has about 0.04 percent carbon dioxide so by the time the air goes in carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood into the air the exhaled air coming out has about four percent carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide was produced in cells by respiration and it diffused into the blood um, and when the blood went to the uh, blood capillaries around the alveoli then the carbon dioxide diffused out of the blood to the alveoli what about water vapor well the inhaled air the air around us that we're breathing in may have variable amounts of water vapor because it could be a rainy day today or a dry day so uh, variable amounts of water vapor going in but by the time the air goes out in exhaled air it is saturated with water vapor this is because we said that the alveoli have a film of moisture or a lining of moisture so the water vapor from this moisture um, goes into the exhaled air the temperature of the inhaled air may be variable depending on what the temperature is outside at the moment but by the time the air goes in and comes out it it is warmed as it passes over the tissues in the air passages so by the time it comes out it's about the temperature of the body nitrogen gas goes in and comes out without changing remember that we do not absorb nitrogen in the form of gas and that's why in order to make proteins we have to eat proteins and then it is broken down by digestion and so on we do not absorb nitrogen as a gas so the amount of nitrogen going in is the same as the amount of nitrogen in exhaled air this is an experiment that they usually ask about in which we have two test tubes containing equal amounts of lime water and i want to show that expired air or exhaled air has more 
carbon dioxide. So we're breathing in and out through that tube in the middle. Can you see the tubes going in and out of the test tubes? There is a tube going in to test tube A and the tube goes through the lime water. This is the air that we're breathing in. So the air coming from outside goes through tube A. Now, when we breathe out, the air we breathe out is going through tube B. Now, which one, of course, if they have lime water, remember that carbon dioxide in exhaled air or carbon dioxide in general will turn lime water milky. So the question is which test tube will turn milky first? Of course, the one that has exhaled air or the air breathed out that is test tube B, will become milky first since exhaled air has more carbon dioxide than inhaled air. Effects of cigarette smoke. We're going to say that cigarette smoke has three main harmful substances. The first one is nicotine, and you should know that nicotine in cigarette smoke is the addictive substance. And we said addictive means that the body gets used to it and needs more and more of it. That is why when someone is used to smoking cigarettes, it is very difficult to stop it. This is because the cigarette smoke contains nicotine and nicotine is addictive. So if he says, what are the harmful effects of nicotine? Well, first it is addictive. It also increases the heart rate and raises blood pressure. All of this puts more strain on the heart, so it may lead to heart attack or heart disease. So nicotine is addictive and may lead to heart attack. Tar is the black stuff that comes out from smoking cigarettes. Now tar goes into the lungs, it harms the cells of the lungs, and it may cause lung cancer. So this is a very a dangerous substance. It also uh, affects the cells that are lining the respiratory system. We said we have two types of cells. The goblet cells secrete mucus and the ciliated cells have cilia that should push the mucus out. Now when someone smokes cigarettes the tar goes into his lungs. The tar irritates the goblet cells so it makes it secrete more mucus. So the person that uh, smokes cigarettes has lots of mucus in his respiratory system. It also inhibits the ciliated cells. That means it does not allow the cilia to work. The cilia, the function of the cilia is to sweep or to push the mucus out of the respiratory system. So if the cilia are not working, then the mucus will go into the alveoli. Now, anything that goes into your lungs causes coughing. Too much coughing would lead to bronchitis, that is irritation of the uh, respiratory tract, or eventually it will lead to emphysema. Emphysema is when the alveoli bursts and the person starts to cough up blood. So this is a dangerous disease. These are called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Carbon monoxide also comes out of cigarette smoke. Now, the problem with carbon monoxide, we said before, it combines with hemoglobin in red blood cells, so less oxygen is transported to body cells. Also, it causes more cholesterol to deposit inside the arteries. And remember, we said if fat or cholesterol deposits inside the arteries, this would block the arteries, and this leads to coronary heart disease. So, the part of cigarette smoke that affects the heart is nicotine and carbon monoxide. But the part that causes lung cancer is tar. Of course, pregnant women should not smoke cigarettes because presence of carbon monoxide in the blood reduces the oxygen going to the fetus, so the baby is born smaller than normal. So usually, pregnant women will have babies that are smaller than normal because their blood had less oxygen supply to the fetus. Also, the nicotine in cigarette smoke can go to the fetus. And remember, we said nicotine causes increase in heart rate. Now, this put, puts more strain on the heart of the fetus, 
and usually pregnant women who smoke cigarettes will either have miscarriages and that means the baby uh, dies in the first few months of pregnancy or stillbirth that means the baby dies while it is being born what is respiration you should know definition of respiration is breakdown of glucose in living cells to release energy and we need the energy for a lot of things we need them first of all for contraction of muscles for movement we also need them to prepare anything that is needed by the cells, so protein synthesis to make enzymes, hormones, cell membrane, cytoplasm, all of these things are made from proteins. We need them to make new cells for growth, for maintenance of the body temperature, you need to keep your body warm, so all of this requires energy. This is an experiment to illustrate the release of heat in respiration. So this shows that when living cells respire, they release heat or they become hot. So we have two flasks. These are insulated flasks, so the heat shouldn't go out of it. In one, we have germinating seeds. You understand the meaning of germinating seeds? It means that seeds that are wet and are doing respiration so of course if they're doing respiration then they release energy and that that means that that thermometer the uh, temperature rises now in the other flask we have boiled seeds what does boiled seeds mean it means seeds in which the enzymes have been denatured so it is not doing any respiration so this boiled seeds no respiration that means no change in the temperature in the thermometer this flask b is what we call a control experiment remember that we said when we do experiments we should have a control a control means repeating the experiments without the substance that are that is being tested to make sure that the results are due to that substance. So we are repeating the experiments without respiration. Our boiled seeds is not doing respiration. So when the temperature does not change, that tells me that uh, the flask A in which the temperature went up, that was because of respiration. Okay. So we said respiration is breakdown of glucose to release energy. Now, if this is in presence of oxygen, we call that aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration is the breakdown of glucose in presence of oxygen to release energy in living cells. And you should remember the equation for respiration. And you should remember that this is the opposite of photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, we had carbon dioxide plus water to give glucose plus oxygen. In aerobic respiration, it's the oxygen. Glucose plus oxygen to give carbon dioxide plus water, and you have to know the symbol equation. Um, this is an experiment to, to show that this insect larva is doing respiration, and while doing respiration, it is using up something from the air which we say is oxygen so we have the insect lava in a tube and uh, we have what we call soda lime soda lime is the substance that absorbs carbon dioxide i want to show that the insect is taking oxygen but actually what it is doing it is taking oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide now, I want to make sure that I understand that it is taking in something. So we put soda lime. The soda lime absorbs any carbon dioxide giving out. So in the end, when the insect takes oxygen, that colored liquid in that tube will move up to replace the oxygen that is taken for respiration. Again, the insect larva is doing respiration. So actually, it is taking in oxygen giving out carbon dioxide now any carbon dioxide that's giving out will be absorbed by the soda lime so it is as if it is not giving out anything so we have colored liquid in that tube if the insect is taking oxygen from the air then that colored tube goes up why do we need a water bath 
Remember that the water bath is to maintain constant temperature. Okay, let's take a look at some of the questions on this topic. So this question says the diagram shows the human gas exchange system, which is the larynx. Can you see where the larynx is? The larynx is that first part which he labeled A, that is immediately before the trachea. What are the functions of cilia and mucus in the gas exchange system? Remember we said the gaseous exchange system or the respiratory system is lined with two types of cells. The goblet cells secrete mucus and the sediated cells have cilia. Now what is the function of the cilia? Remember that the uh, cilia move the mucus out of the respiratory system. What does the mucus do? The mucus traps pathogens. So our answer here is C. What is the function of ciliated cells in the bronchi? We said ciliated cells do what? They move the mucus out of the respiratory system. The diagram shows a blood capillary and a red blood cell next to three respiring muscle cells. So we have muscle cells next to the blood. Which arrows show the net movement of carbon dioxide? Where is carbon dioxide moving from and to? Is it moving from the cells to the blood or from the blood to the cells? You should remember that carbon dioxide is moving from the cells to the blood because it's made in the cells by respiration. The depth and rate of breathing changes depending on the activity of the body the body is doing. Which row shows the effects of strenuous physical exercise on depth and rate of breathing? Remember, when you're doing a lot of exercise, what happens to your depth of breathing? You should remember that when you do a lot of exercise, you're breathing deeply and you're breathing fast. So it is deep and fast when we do exercise. All cells of plants need a source of glucose for aerobic respiration. State the balance symbol equation for aerobic respiration. Again, you remember how to write the symbol equation for aerobic respiration? It's glucose plus oxygen to give carbon dioxide plus water. And you should remember the formula for glucose is C6H12O6. And of course, when we balance, we need this kind of balance. So just how root cells are supplied with glucose. So the cells in the root get the glucose from where? Remember that the plant makes glucose in what? Where is glucose made? It is made by photosynthesis, right? So the plant takes light, carbon dioxide, water, and makes photosynthesis. So it makes glucose. Now, how does the glucose go to the roots? Remember that photosynthesis in the leaves makes glucose. This is transported through the phloem in the form of sucrose to the roots, and then the roots can use this for their own respiration. This is the human gas exchange system. Name structures A and B. Do you remember what is A? A is that main tube carrying air into your lungs. This is trachea. And B is the bronchiole. Tobacco smoke can have harmful effects on the gas exchange system. Describe the harmful effects of the following components of tobacco smoke. We said, what is harmful about nicotine? Nicotine, we said, it is addictive. It in increases heart rate and raises blood pressure. And this puts strain on the heart, leading to heart attack. What is the problem of tar? Remember, tar causes lung cancer. It also irritates goblet cells, inhibits ciliated cells, so the mucus slides into the alveoli, causing coughing, and this could lead to bronchitis or emphysema. Gas exchange takes place at the gas exchange surfaces of organisms. This figure shows where gas exchange takes place in the lungs. Use the figure to describe what happens at a gas exchange surface. What is happening there? 
Remember, the oxygen diffuses from the alveoli to the blood, and the carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood into the alveoli. Name the gas exchange surface in the lungs. Where does this happen? This happens in the alveoli. One is called alveolus. Many are called alveoli. Okay, this table shows the percentage composition of gases in inspired air and expired air. Explain why the percentage of carbon dioxide is greater in expired air than in inspired air. Remember we said, why is it that expired air has more carbon dioxide? This is because the carbon dioxide was produced by respiration in cells. Then it diffuses into the blood. And then when the blood reaches the alveoli, the carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood to the air in the alveoli to go out with the expired Okay. State two features of alveoli that make them efficient gas exchange surfaces. Remember we said these alveoli have large surface area, thin wall. We can also say um, moist surfaces, uh, ventilation, fresh air going in and out, uh, a good supply of blood capillaries, and so on. Figure, this figure shows some cells which line the trachea. So we have a cell that has mucus and a cell that has cilia. State the name of the cell that has mucus. So cell C is the one that is giving out mucus. It is called goblet cell. Describe the roles of cilia and mucus in protecting the gas exchange system. Remember, what does the cilia do? The cilia push mucus out of the respiratory system. And the mucus, the mucus is the one that traps bacteria, viruses, pathogens in general. Describe one effect of tar in tobacco smoke. Remember, what does tar do? You can say it causes lung cancer, or you could say it irritates the goblet cells, causing more mucus, or it inhibits the cilia, causing the mucus to go into the lungs, leading to coughing. So all of these are effects of tar. This figure shows a diagram of an alveolus. On the figure, draw an arrow to show the direction of movement of carbon dioxide during gas exchange. Carbon dioxide goes from where to where. You should realize that the carbon dioxide is in the blood, so it will go in this direction, from the blood to the alveolus. Explain why oxygen molecules diffuse from alveolus into the blood. Why does oxygen go into the blood? Remember, this is diffusion. And how does diffusion happen? When there is higher concentration of oxygen molecules in the air inside the alveoli. So the oxygen diffuses, we said, from high concentration to low concentration. Or you could say it diffuses down the concentration gradient. This figure shows apparatus which is used to study the contents of cigarette smoke. A pump draws air through the apparatus. When the cigarette is lit, the smoke produced travels through the apparatus. So we're going to travel through a U-tube that has cotton wool and a test tube that has lime water. Now he's saying the lime water turns milky. Explain why. Why does the lime water turn milky? Because the air breathed during uh, cigarette smoke, this has carbon dioxide. Remember that the gas that causes lime water to turn milky is carbon dioxide. Tar from the cigarette is left on the cotton wool. Describe one effect of tar on gas exchange system. We, we just said the effect of tar, main effect, causes lung cancer. Cigarette smoke damages the cilia that line the airway. Explain why this is harmful. Now, we said why, when the cilia is damaged, what happens? The mucus slides into the respiratory system, and this causes coughing, and this could lead to bronchitis, emphysema, and so on. The lit cigarette also produces carbon monoxide. Explain why this is a harmful gas. We said what's bad about carbon monoxide? It attaches to hemoglobin in red blood cells, so less 
oxygen is transported to the cells. Are we following all of this? Okay, this question shows some features of the human gas exchange system. Use lines to connect each feature with its benefit to the system. So, for example, ciliated cells, what do they do? Remember, we said the ciliated cells. Mucus is moved upwards. It pushes the mucus out of the respiratory system. Alveoli, millions of alveoli in the lungs. This provides large surface area for gas exchange. If we say mucus produced by cells lining the airway, what does the mucus do? It traps bacteria. So bacteria are trapped. Thin walls of alveoli. How is that useful? It provides short diffusion distance. And that's the end of this video. Um, I hope this topic is a little bit better for you. So um, thank you for listening and please keep listening to the video.